All right, so are you ready to dive deep into the mind of David Goggins? I am. This is the guy who literally wrote the book on pushing your limits. Yeah. It's called Can't Hurt Me. We're gonna unpack how this guy went from a childhood that would make most people crumble to becoming a Navy SEAL, an ultra marathon runner, and a straight up inspiration machine. It's really remarkable. Yep. So. Um, What's fascinating about Goggins is his brutal honesty. Yeah. He doesn't just tell his story. He dissects it. Yeah. Exposing every raw and vulnerable detail. He holds nothing back. He talks about his childhood. I'm not exaggerating. He calls it living in hell. His dad had this successful skating rink business. Skateland thing, flashing lights, music, pumping people, having a good time. Right. Having a blast. But for Goggins, it was a mask hiding a much darker reality. Yeah. You get this stark contrast <laughs> between the... Uh, dream cloud facade his father presented to the world and the nightmare that Goggins and his brother lived through. Oh, absolutely. Forced labor at the rink, never seeing a dime for their work. Yeah. Living in constant fear of their father's volatile temper. Exactly. Imagine living under that kind of pressure, never knowing when the next explosion might happen. He talks about his dad controlling all the money, his mom having nothing to her name and the violence. It's heavy stuff. Witnessing his mom being beaten, being physically abused himself. He even talks about his dad pointing a gun at him when he was only eight years old. Just awful. Just horrific. It makes you wonder how anyone could come out of that environment and not just survive, but thrive. And just when it seems like things might be looking up for young Dawkins, tragedy strikes again. His would-be stepfather, Wilmoth, is murdered. Shot five times execution style. And this is a turning point in the story. Not just because of the trauma of losing someone close, but because the murder was never solved. It leaves Goggins and his mom with this open wound, this feeling of injustice that just hangs over everything. Absolutely. And it shatters the fragile sense of stability they had just started to build. Imagine the impact of that kind of loss on top of everything else he'd already endured. It's a lot to process for anyone, let alone a kid. So they try a fresh start in Indianapolis. He ends up at this prestigious school, Cathedral High, though he admits he got in by cheating. He's good at basketball, but deep down he feels like a fraud because he's struggling academically. Hmm. This is a recurring theme in Gaga's early life, the feeling of being an imposter, even when he's succeeding. It speaks to the deep-seated insecurity that stemmed from his childhood. Right, and that feeling follows him back to Buffalo, where they eventually move back. He clashes with the culture, tries to fit in, but that feeling of not belonging lingers. He's caught in this cycle of trying to bury his past trauma under this tough guy persona. Mm -hmm. But it's clear that he hasn't dealt with the root of the problem yet. He's a young man teetering on the edge, and this is where we really start to see the stage set for his incredible transformation. Yeah, yeah. So here he is, 19 years old, overweight, stuck in dead-end jobs, and haunted by this feeling of being trapped by his own past. You can almost feel the weight of it all crashing down on him. Yeah, and, and it literally takes looking in the mirror for him to face this brittle truth about himself. Yeah. He sees a low-budget thug, his words going nowhere fast. It's a moment of raw, painful self-awareness but it's also the catalyst for everything that comes next. He could have easily spiraled down from there, but instead he does something extraordinary. He decides to take control. He makes a choice to stop being a victim of his circumstances right. and starts taking radical responsibility for his life. He shaves his head, ditches distractions, and joins the Air Force. But it's more than just enlisting. It's about confronting his deepest insecurities head on. Right. He talks about developing this new ritual of self-discipline, Waking up early, pushing himself physically, and for the first time, really applying himself academically. And this is where we start to see the seeds of his calloused mind philosophy. Right. It's this idea that you have to train your mind to be as tough as your body. He talks about how the more he studied, the more he worked out, the less he focused on the resentment and anger he'd been carrying around for so long. It's like he was literally sweating out the negativity. But he didn't stop there. Goggins then stumbles upon the Navy SEALs. And for him, this becomes the ultimate test. He wants to prove to himself once and for all that he's capable of anything. And naturally, the path to becoming a SEAL is paved with obstacles. He's told he's too heady, gets rejected by recruiters, but he refuses to give up. He even meets a recruiter, Stephen Shaljo, who sees a spark in him, but tells him straight up he needs to lose a ridiculous amount of weight to even qualify. And Goggins loses over 100 pounds in three months. <laughs> this is a guy who used to eat cake and donuts for breakfast, suddenly embracing this superhuman level of discipline. That's insane. It's like he flipped a switch in his brain, went from self-sabotage to becoming a machine. And then comes Hell Week, probably the most infamous part of SEAL training. Can you even imagine what that must be like? Sleep deprivation, freezing cold water, constant physical and mental torture. It's designed to break you. 
And Goggins goes through it three times. The first time he gets double pneumonia and has to be medically dropped. The second time he finishes, but suffers multiple stress fractures in his legs. Talk about pushing your body to the absolute limit. Wow. But he doesn't just endure it. He thrives on it. He talks about this second wind theory, this idea that we all have a reserve tank of energy and willpower that we can tap into if we push ourselves hard enough. He used pain as fuel. So instead of letting the pain break him, he used it to propel himself forward. He even talks about visualizing success, constantly asking himself why he's doing this and using that answer to power through the toughest moments. It's incredible. Yeah. He was literally rewriting his own narrative, proving to himself that he was capable of things he never thought possible. He even starts taping his legs together to deal with the stress fractures. Mm. Who does that? This is where you really start to see the calloused mind in action. He's not just physically tough, but mentally unbreakable. So you'd think after conquering the seemingly impossible challenge of becoming a SEAL, Goggins would take a break, right? Right. Kick back, relax, enjoy the victory. Uh -huh. But that's not Goggins. He's driven by this insatiable desire to push his limits to see how far he can go. But there's another layer to it now. He starts running ultra marathons, and this time it's about more than just personal achievement. It's about honoring the memory of fallen comrades. He tragically lost several teammates in Operation Red Wings, the mission Marcus Luttrell wrote Lone Survivor about. These weren't just guys he served with, they were his brothers. Right, and this loss fuels him in a whole new way. He runs his first 100-mile race, the San Diego, one day, with zero training. Wow. You heard that right? No training. Yeah. Most people wouldn't even attempt that after years of preparation. No. It's mind-blowing. He pushes his body to the absolute brink, ends up with kidney failure, stress fractures, you name it. Oh, my goodness. But he also raises a ton of money for the Special Operations Warrior Foundation, supporting the families of fallen soldiers. And that's what I find so inspiring about Goggins. He channels his pain, his grief into something positive, something that honors the memory of his friends while also inspiring others to push beyond their own perceived limits. Yeah, and the crazy part is he doesn't stop there. He sets his sights on the Badwater 135, which is basically running 135 miles through Death Valley in the middle of summer. Have you ever been to Death Valley? I haven't, but I've heard stories. It's like the surface of the sun. It's brutal, unforgiving terrain, and Goggins not only finishes, he thrives in it. Oh, wow. And keep in mind, this is after he's run the Hurt 100 in Hawaii, another grueling 100-mile race with insane elevation gain. It's incredible how he just keeps going. It's unbelievable. What's interesting is how he approaches these challenges. He talks about compartmentalizing his time and effort, breaking these monumental tasks down into smaller, more manageable pieces. It's like he's hacking his own brain to overcome mental barriers. That's such a valuable lesson right there. So often we get overwhelmed by the sheer size of our goals, but Goggins reminds us to focus on the next step, the next mile, the next rep. Absolutely. Yeah. And he lives it. Mm -hmm. He talks about waking up at 5 a.m. to run with a weighted backpack before work. This is a guy who pushes himself harder before most people even wake up. He even attempts to join Delta Force, the Army's elite counterterrorism unit. Wow. He makes it through their incredibly tough selection process, but gets medically disqualified because of a heart condition he was born with. This is after his second heart surgery. Wow. It's almost like he's defying the odds at every turn. Absolutely. But it speaks to this idea that our biggest limitations are often the ones we impose on ourselves. Right. He jokes about running on a tank that's perpetually half full, but it's that attitude, that refusal to give up that makes him so inspiring. And ultimately, that's what Goggins wants us to take away from his story. We all have untapped potential, a calloused mind waiting to be forged. It's about embracing the discomfort, pushing through the pain, and never giving up on ourselves. He even says, comfort is the enemy of greatness. It's about constantly challenging ourselves, learning new things, starting each day like it's day one. I love that. Well, that's David Goggins. The guy is incredible. Thank you so much for taking this deep dive with me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.